Okay, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Kibun Si Vitun Kitwani from the Master's Degree of Science program in Infantology for Faculty of Dentistry, Mahidon University, Bangkok, Thailand. Today, I'm very glad to present my research thesis in the title, The Stability of Immediate Implant Placement in Mandibular Posterior Region, a preliminary of case clinical trial. I'm very thanks to my three advisor, lecturer Palinya Amon Sitachai. Assistant Professor Warapong Panyayon and Assistant Professor Subhashai Sukhanji. And this is my thesis outline that I'm going to present. At the first chapter, Introduction, I will give you some background information in short story about how the research idea comes from. After tooth extraction, there are four treatment options from the ITI consensus conference in 2008. The type 1 protocol, which is the immediate implant placement when the implant is placed after the tooth extraction immediately. The advantages of the immediate implant placement are superior to the delay protocol, including the soft and hard tissue preservation, less treatment time, and fewer surgical procedures. According to the timing of the implant placement after the tooth extraction, um, there are several studies to show that the survival rate between the immediate and the conventional one is comparable. And the critical requirement for good osteos integration and the implant success is the implant stability. What is the implant stability? Um, the implant stability is defined as absence of the clinical mobility, which is also such as the like, definition of the osteointegration, and a, a clinical stable implant also exhibits a, a, lot, a little bit micro motion um, when you load the boss. There are many, many measurement techniques for the assessing implant stability. The last one, which is a resonance frequency analysis or the RFA, is a famous non-invasive, reputable, and objective tool. Um, the RFA determined the implant stability as a stiffness of the bone implant in the case. Now today, the new generation of the RFA device is developed because less and more convenient. The transducer, when we call the smart pick, is a small metallic rod with a magnet on the top, which is attached directly to the implant picture by screwing into the inner surface of the implant. It's displayed as the ISQ value, which came from implant stability quotient, the ISQ is ranged between 0 and 100. A higher ISQ value indicated the higher implant stability. For two decades, um, the implant stability, uh, sorry, the immediate implant placement has been limited in the aesthetic zone, in the front of the aesthetic zone, but in recent years, um, immediate placement has been interested in the molar posterior region. In addition, the posterior regions was quite challenged because of their anatomical structures, such as inferior aurora nerve. Um, some prospective case theory reveals that the immediate implant placement at the lower posterior region was predictable. Most of the research clinical parameter uh, from the previous were like oral radiograph, walking depth, Back scores or any breeding index, but the implant stability evaluation with the IFA was lack of the evidence. So therefore, our research objective is to evaluate the stability of the immediate implant placement in the lower posterior region. Next topic is the maturing. The ethic of this study was affirmed by the IRB um, the CRA number MUDTPY IRB 2020 011.2801. This is the inclusion criteria, which is patient aged more 18 years old who is healthy and represent a hopeless prognosis, which caused by any root fracture problem, endodontic failure, or unrestorable. And moreover, the two Extraction should represent the intact both buccal and lingual size. And this is the equation criteria following in the slides. 
And this is the overall process. At the recruitment part, at the first one on the left side, all patients will provide intraoral oral screening and the informed consent first. The informed consents will include all the research process, complication, expense, and amount of the total. After a patient decides to uh, participate in this research, they were taking the intraoral examination, photograph, digital impression, and the CBCT. The DICOM files from the CBCT and the STL file from the intraoral scanner will transfer and merge together in the implant planning software. And then the program will decide the implant position on each participant. Um, it was planned as a possibility reference protocol and confirm the plan with the operator. The surgical treatment plans was done by the same operator. The mandibular posterior tooth were removed with the automatic technique, and then the eye surgical stain were checked for fitting to the jaw, and then osteotomy were performed in sequence as recommended by the company. Then the implant um, used the superline to bolero taper implant from Pentium was placed, and the ISQ measurement was done, which I will explain later on. Afterwards, the alloplastic bone material of the arm was filled in the gap. Then we put a customized healing abutment was placed at the one stage surgery procedure. And this is the IFA measurement. The smart peg, which is a metallic rod on the upper right, was tightened to the implant with four to five Newton centimeters with a finger tight filling. Then the hand proof of the ISQ monitor, we use the mega ISQ, was held perpendicular to the tip of the smart pick in the four direction at the buckle, lingual, medial, and distal aspect. And each size was repeated three times to find the average mean value. The device is measured and displayed as a number of 0 to 100. The ISQ at the day after implant placement are recorded at the zero day as the baseline. Um, all participants were follow up and collected the ISQ by one operator. The ISQ value were recorded at the zero day as the baseline immediately after implant placement one week, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, and 12 weeks. After that, at six months after the implant placement, the prosthetic pass was done with our final crown. And this is the summarized our protocol our protocol research from the start into to the data analysis. And this is our research timeline. The data analysis uh, is used SPSS version 18. Um, the data was normal distribution, so we used the multivariate test to calculate between the ISQ value and the different point of time. The confidence interval was set at 95% and we value P value below the 0.05 was interpreted as a statistically significant. And then here come to the result. In overall, all 10 patients with the seven females and three males with a mean age of 44.6 uh, from the 24 to the 69 years old were enrolled in this study. The immediate implants for the year will operate on two second PMORA, or first molar and four second molar teeth. Most of the teeth were extracted from the problem from the endodontic barrier problem, following by the non restorable non teeth, root fracture, and uh, external root resorption. Basically. 10 implants were inserted in poorly um, at 10 and 12 millimeter in length with a regular diameter. Our dental implant has successful inflation with no any complication. And this is the overall process from the surgical part to the prosthetic part. On the left side, it is a preoperative tooth, number three, six, and then there is the fresh socket after a traumatic extraction. The next one is the post-operative follow-up at three months. And the last one is the final prosthetic at six months with monolithic zirconia graph. And this graph shows the details of the implant stability in terms of the ISQ value in each tooth throughout the three-month follow-up. The primary stability 
uh, after the implant placement at the zero day was more than 60 in every case. The lowest um, primary stability was detected in the second premolar and the second molar teeth, which has the ISQ 65. The intra stability tend to dip between one week and four week. Then they increase gradually up to 12 week, which has ISQ more than 70. And this graph is summarized the overall trending graph of the implant stability from the zero day to the um, 12 weeks follow up. You can see that the lowest point was as four week. Additionally, the mean ISQ value after the implant insertion was 72.85, which slightly increased at the first week, then is decreased at the second week and fourth week after the implant placement which was have the minimum point of mean ISQ value at 72.95. And after four weeks, the mean ISQ value steadily improved until the 12th week at uh, 18 ISQ value. And uh, from the statistic, there were statistical significant difference between each point of the experimental time with P value 4.039. Next one is the discussion. Uh, in this study, immediate implant placement in the lower posterior teeth with regular diameter implants for what favorable outcome and they achieved successful integration. According to our, our finding, the mean ISQ value after implants insertions was 73 at 85 at the baseline, and our ISQ value was deep at the fourth week. And then it steadily improved until 12 weeks at 18. It was supported by the previous study of the implant placement in the vulnerable, but in the hill side, with the SLA surface implants. Shoki and College in 2013 also found a similar outcome in the prospective cohort study. For all 15 mandibular implants, the average ISQ value was continuously decreased to the same fourth week, which had a IS, mean ISQ value about 72. After that, it started to increase until the 11 week, as in this slide. Moreover, there was another study of the implant stability alteration during six months with the IFA measurement. It revealed the same trending in the mandibular teeth which is in the orange line, in which the mean stability at the baseline was 24, and the minimum price was 71.82 at the fourth week. They conclude that the implant stability was correlated with time. Mm -hmm. The implant uh, should be engaged in the intact bone for achieving great primary stability. In anterior teeth, the two sockets could sustain the implant apically and palatally. On the contrary, the fresh molar socket were more challenged due to the socket more forward, which there was T-type based on the shaping of the septic bone. From the study of the Smith and Tana in 2013, we reported that in the type A has an adequate septal bone for complete implant engagement, and type B socket had a septal bone within the socket, but not enough to contain the implant 100%. And type C socket doesn't have any septal bone to stabilize the implant. So the implant has to engage with the surrounding wall. In this study, the lowest, the lower second premolar in the ID1 and second molar in ID9 had the lowest instability as shown in the blue box because their socket was prone to type C and are with no septal bone to stabilize the implant. Therefore, the implant has to engage with the surrounding socket wall and also the apical remaining bone. In this category, if there are no any buckle or wrinkle plates remain, the delay protocol should be chosen. And the next factor is challenge for the posterior patients with limited space of the bone below the two socket, which should be concerned with the anatomical structure. Um, for in college, you can uh, see in the slide in 2011, found a high list of wrinkle plate perforation in the molar region, resulting in high risk of the sublingual and sublingual. Yeah. Therefore, the cone BCT um, would help to reduce this complication. The limitation of this study consists of a small sample size and short-term follow-up and variation of the experimental area. 
We have success, a greater sample size, longer follow up, and are localized, especially in Molati, for the further study in the future. So, our research conclusion is the implant stability is time dependent, and the ISQ value of one stage immediate implant placement in the mandibular posterior teeth could be achieved over 60 in both primary and secondary studies. And this is my reference. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you very much, Dr. Pipunsi. Thank you for your great presentation. This is very interesting topic. Okay, or maybe some question from participants. Any question are welcome. So in this afternoon session, we have less participants than in the morning. Okay. Or if there are no any questions, uh, I have a question. Uh, could you explain more how to achieve the primary stability of the immediate implant placement in posterior teeth in case that you have no septum, septal bone? No septal bone, for example, in the... In the, in the second molar area yeah, so you expand that you have the more yeah um this one is prone to type c like uh, in the in the anterior you, you have the um, cone shape of the root so um uh we plan to the to use the more more longer implant in length to achieve more bone to implant contact or larger diameters to to engage uh, if, if it could engage enough, enough to engage the buccal and lingual wall or the surrounding bone, mm -hmm. it will be helped to uh, achieve more primary stability. Okay. Have you, could you please summarize your suggestion if uh, I would like to follow uh, this protocol and what is the criteria for case selection to, to do this? immediate implant placement in posterior region. Could you please summarize? Okay, the immediate implant placement need to do the case selection, not in every case suitable for the immediate implant placement. So the, the criteria to use, the, I think uh, you need to have the available remaining bone uh, to engage your, your implants because there are Really, uh, the primary stability of the implant placement is really, really important for your implant success. Um, in this protocol, we use the we use the uh, like a digital digital guide that that have a quite mm -hmm. more precision and accuracy to make the you know to the to make your your your, your hand drill to more able to make a great primary stability compared, you know, for the free hand, if you don't have the great, um, great hand, it will be made for primary stability when during your, during the, the drill. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Pibunsi, for your very useful information.